Hi, I'm Stacey from Fun Caliber, and today I'm joined by David Coombs, Manager of Rathbone Strategic Growth Portfolio. David, thanks for making time to speak with us today. No problem. Glad to be here. Um, last month, uh, when I spoke to you, you said that one of the best opportunities, in your opinion, for the next five to 10 years was med technology. Uh, is this still your view as the world is coming out of lockdown? Yeah, I think more than ever. I mean, like like many of the trends that we saw pre-COVID, you know, I think this situation has just accelerated the transition that we're going to need to follow as we move forwards into a world where we've got aging populations and where we're seeing the rise of unhealthy lifestyles having an impact on on government expenditure, but also into ourselves. So I think, you know. The politics drives this debate to a certain extent. Only recently we've seen, you know, the uh, Nicola Sturgeon um, um, uh, announcing a 4% pay rise for nurses. And, and part of the problem we have is that, you know, healthcare systems are politicized. And I think it's really important we get away from the politics and find other ways of solving the healthcare crisis that we are going to see which COVID has exacerbated as we try and play catch up over the next couple of years. And I think medtech is one of the key areas that's going to help. When we when we talk about medtech, um, is this just kind of technology coming in to help make surgeries more efficient or is it efficiency with even simple things like making an appointment with your GP online or maybe having that call as a you know, a phone consultation, if it doesn't need to be done in person, what type of kind of technology aspects are you are you looking at? I think it's at every level, frankly, from a GP visit to wound dressings, which can, using technology only has to be changed once a week instead of once an hour, which improve also outcomes and, and increase the speed of recovery, right through to, you know, um, highly technical open heart surgery, using new technologies that reduce the time and the invasiveness of those procedures. And I'm going to use a word that's slightly shocking in terms of healthcare. Brace yourself. It's productivity gains. Actually, it's two words. And, you know, one has to be careful to talk about productivity in, in, in a subject as sensitive as healthcare. But ultimately, there is not enough money we can throw at this issue that's going to solve the problem. We have to increase the number of patients seen per hour per person. And if we can do that, then we can pay our cl clinical staff better wages and we'll waste less money on administration, cancelled appointments, operations that take much longer. And we need to be better at preventing people being ill rather than spending all the money on treating them once they become ill. So MedTech covers everything from treatment to prevention and that's where my focus is. Uh, and MedTech is about saving costs. And that's music to government's ears. Um, it's, it sounds like it's more about being efficient than, than anything else. Um, and I, I saw in your recent presentation, um, virtual hospitals. What, what is a virtual hospital? I can't even like get my head around what, that could be a hospital is, you know, you've gone to A&E, something bad has happened. How, how is this going virtual? Yeah, I mean, obviously, the definition of hospital uh, is different than A&E and a hospital that looks after elderly patients, right? So I'm really thinking here about the, the old sort of localised hospitals, regional hospitals, um, rather than sort of big you know, A&E hospitals. What do I mean? I mean? What I'm trying to do really here, it's just, that's just one example of a kind of blue sky thinking in healthcare in the next 10 years. And if you think about one of the biggest crises we have in the UK, but it's not just a UK issue, is how we look after the elderly. As, 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 as we see that as a growing percentage of the population, you know, if you just look at the COVID crisis in the UK last year, who was the hardest hit? It was the elderly in care homes because the NHS move the, those patients out of the hospitals into the care homes where they caught COVID. And the care home system is not, it's not a national system. It's not coordinated. It's not that well regulated in my view. So this is, this is a huge issue that needs to be dealt with. I'm, I'm afraid it will need to be dealt with through the help working with the private sector. 
And so what I'm trying to do is think about ways that improve the outcome for the patient, but also improves the cost effectiveness of delivery. So think about virtual hospitals. So think about in your local community, if we can keep elderly patients at home for longer using sensor technology, using robotics, and have somebody working in a hub nearby, with a bank of screens, think about the person in your shopping malls or the bank of screens, but they go and see the patients when they need them rather than just routinely seeing them every 10 o'clock, three days a week. And let's just hope they need them at those three hours of the week rather than the other time. So if we can be more responsive, if we can, um, as I say, keep patients at home where they want to be rather than in, in, in sort of dormitories away from their families, that's what I mean by a virtual hospital. It's just rethinking the definition of hospitals, like we're going to rethink the definition of GP, GP practices. Now, will that happen? Won't it? I don't know. But that's what I'm trying to think about. Also thinking about surgeons that can operate on more than one patient at once using robotics and just trying to just get a feel for where does this technology go. And of course, some of it will be nonsense and some of it will happen. But that's that for me is a really exciting area to invest in right now. But we need to be careful because there's also a lot of money uh, that could be lost in this area. And you mentioned the risk uh, in investing in this kind of area. Um, biotech is often seen as risky as well. Um, what what kind of are the the risks investing in med tech? Well, you know, there are risks because we're dealing in you know, very complex procedures, complex areas. And, and as we've seen in, in the last sort of 12 months to 24 months, we've seen a couple of companies in the US, for example, Theranos and Ubiome, which were in the testing area, um, which were raising you know, millions of capital, uh, millions of dollars of capital based on fraudulent claims of the effectiveness of their testing. And often these people surround themselves by non-experts, but people from, uh, from politics who give them that kind of credibility. Uh, it's, a, it's a welcome reminder that you know, this is an area that one needs to sort of approach with caution. You know, we tend to focus on, on the much larger companies, which have got a track record of already bringing products to market and being able to monetize them. I admit it's not, you're not going to make as much money as, as a company that's, that's a startup or a unicorn or whatever, whatever the, uh, you know, the exciting stuff is today. But ultimately, yeah, I would, I'd rather invest in companies that are existing and are well capitalized and got the profits already. Um, and I'm willing to give up on the sort of the excess returns um, that you, you, you might make in the startups, but it, it's fraught with, with risk. And do you do you have an example of a company that you is might be known to our viewers that you really like in this space? Um, so a company like uh, Edwards Life Sciences may be well known. I mean, uh, this this is a, a, a company that um, is in, in the leads in valve technology uh, and uh, non invasive procedures with regard to heart surgery, um, which. Going back to the point I was making earlier, yeah, that leads to greater productivity. Yes, I've said it again. Um, and that, that, that leadership, you, know, you can monetize that and the company is making profits. And that's the kind of business that I'm really excited by. Well, that's been a very interesting look at healthcare, the future of healthcare more than anything else and where technology is hopefully taking us and the next five, 10 years. Um, thank you, David, for taking the time to, to speak to us today. No, not at all. You're very welcome. Uh, for more information on the Rathbone Strategic Growth Portfolio Fund, visit fundcaliber.com.